Will, of course, uh, carried with him not just his larger-than-life personality and sensibility, but he carried with him the blacklist. <clears throat> he carried into our show uh, the, the history, the, this, this particular history, um, <clears throat> and imbued Grandpa with something completely different than an authoritarian grandfather figure would be, sort of because of you, Will's sort of pantheism and his passion for, for nature and for plants in particular. I don't know if you know all this about him, having planted Shakespeare gardens around the country. Johnny Appleseed. I mean, he'd come to, he'd come to the set with a sack you know, and kind of sometimes dressed in a sack. And he'd, come, and he'd sort of just be, you know, we'd be having conversations and he'd be just throwing wildflower seeds out while he was talking. This is all real, you know. Um, and so he brought this pantheistic quality to the grandfather, a sort of nature quality, which uh, a green man quality, uh, as well as all the wonderful mm, edges and, and uh, foibles and shortcomings of, you know, the, the character in the time. But... He also brought to the set something that was critically important, what, especially for young actors, especially for me, who was now 20, in my 20s, uh, had made movies, had been acting since I was a child, was making money, was famous, you know, all this stuff, and could very easily start to take for granted the immeasurable, you know, gift that had, had been granted to me. But Will Gear, who had been deprived of the opportunity for work for so many years, um, <clears throat> and who had nurtured and helped people in the same predicament, because Will was not just a blacklisted actor because of his own political sensibilities, but his parents as well, of course. Um, Will was not only a blacklisted actor. Will, in his compound in Hollywood of bungalows in his house, uh, gave... Uh, lodging and support and succor to a lot of people in that community, Woody Guthrie and many others, a lot of people who were also in trouble. Uh, he, was a, he, he really was uh, not just one of the victims of the blacklist, he was one of the great supporters of the people who, of, other, of other victims. He was an uh, um, uh, incredibly admirable advocate and, you know, he would feed people and give people lodging and take care. I mean, he was an extraordinary man. Um, in terms of that community. He also was enraged when Beulah Bondi came on the show and was played our aunt because Beulah, I think, had was close to Adolf Manjou and they, they had all sort of testified. <clears throat> so anybody who was even touched by the stink of those testimonies when they were would be on the set, well, you could see it. You could just see that the, the, he was contained, he was always, you know, but there was no mistaking, you know, the, 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 the rage that he felt when those things were brought back up. But, I digress, um, having been deprived of work and having been in a community of people deprived of work, the, to use his word, the gusto with which this older man came to work every day and his refusal to take the work for granted and uh, his appreciation of what it meant not just to have a job in a successful television series, but to have a job doing what you know how to do and love to do. That set an example for those of us who would be very easily like, oh, I got a seven o'clock call, I, I can't, you know, this is too early, or when are we gonna be done, when's lunch? You know, I mean, Will was capable of all that too, as we all are, because we're just normal people doing a job. And sometimes you're just like, let's just get this seed shot and get the fuck out of here, you know. But given, you know, those vagaries, underneath all that was the kind of appreciation for having that job that was always an example for me. I could never take it for granted because of Will. And I adored him. I mean, he was, I mean, we were very close.